I would like to welcome you to our panel. We're going to talk about communication, how to communicate with our loyal visitors, with the non-still uh, recognized visitors. We will talk about how to communicate with Generation Z and with all other generations that are using the products and that are really engaging in the products that my special colleagues and friends are here about to speak. So first, let me present my today's speakers. And uh, I would like to start with Berina Tanovic. Hello. She Hi. is the sales director in Rakuten Viber. Can you tell us a little bit more about your position right now? Yes, of course. So first of all, uh, thank you all for, uh, let's say, uh, taking your time from the uh, second ball and uh, attending this panel. It's really my pleasure to be here with you. And thank you uh, for the amazing uh, event. Uh, I believe it's uh, just uh, more and more coming every, every session that we have together. So uh, currently I'm uh, at position of uh, Global Sales Director at Rakuten Viber. My main responsibility is to actually um, onboard new partners globally that are uh, uh, interested in uh, business messaging from the Viber for Business uh, product portfolio. Great. Uh, considering that uh, people from Serbia are using Viber a lot, and the Serbia is a place where everybody is actually texting more on Viber than, I don't know, on WhatsApp, we'll talk about that phenomena as well today. I'm especially interested in that because I come from media industry and we all know that now media industry uses various platforms and various channels to distribute its content. One of them are, is also Viber, but not only Viber, many of them. So I would like to now welcome Mirza Hadžić, uh, our friend, he's sales director uh, for Europe for InfoBeep. Mirza, hello. Hello, and uh, uh, it, it's really a pleasure being here you know, with such amazing audience and a really great conference. Uh, th this is like uh, our second time uh, of being here. Uh, so, uh, uh, with, within my position uh, in InfoBip, uh, uh, with, together with my team, we are covering uh, uh, 43 countries. It's not only European Union, it's like Europe region more, uh, with, with 10 teams from UK till Ukraine and, uh, and Israel. Uh, working with customers and partners in like this digital transformation towards the conversational experience uh, like and making this shift uh, uh, in creating better customer experience. Yeah, the story clients. about InfoBeep is really extraordinary and uh, the story about the rise of your company is really astonishing. So I would like more to talk about not only what are you doing today, but what are you planning for the future? Because I think you are already in the future with your products. So we are about to follow what you prepare for us. Yeah, thank you for this. And we, we usually like to say Infobip is like the largest company that most of the people never heard of. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You are a silent partner of many of us. Yeah, okay. Uh, it's my special honor to, to say hello to Peter Nelly. He's our, hello, hello, how are you? And I would like to first say that, uh, that you are a head of animation and uh, VFX at ILBE and ILBE Studios. And actually you are coming from a great industry. You are producing something that everybody likes to watch. Animation studio that produce great content. We will have a special video representing your uh, work and your story. So please tell us what is up that you are doing now. Uh, thank you. Dobro dan. Dobro dan. I came from Canada. How many people are here outside of the region? Anyone from Canada? Okay, no, great. actually, so I, I can... think you're the only one here from Canada. Yeah. Super. Uh, I'm like I like I said, I'm head of animation and visual effects for uh, Ilbe Studios, but I'm actually head of animation and visual effects for our parent company, which is Ilbe Entertainment. It's a company headed out of Rome, Italy, which different studios around the world. I help come to different countries like Serbia and build studios for animation. And we just launched, I mean, just two years ago, launched the first fully animated uh, series in Serbia starring Johnny Depp. And, and uh, it's been super great so far. I think I'm a bit of a black horse in that it's different than the rest of the panelists, but um, thank you for having me. I, actually, I've been to every Adia Summit. I've been invited for each one to speak. Yeah, me so. too. Yeah, that's cool. So, <laughs> so. hvala lepo. Oh, nema na čemu. Okay, you're doing great with Serbia, so just keep uh, 
uh, just keep doing it like that. Uh, we will see the video about your company later and explain more in more in detail uh, what are you doing now. But it's very interesting for our guests today and audience to show them how you can communicate with users via animated video. This is something totally different than than uh, anything that uh, our guests are, are are doing. But let's stick to that later. Cool. Now, now, my dear friend, Nela, Nela uh, Buncic Vukomanovic is head of creative at CAS Media, but actually she is my colleague from media industry. So we are well uh, engaged in, in, in handling the news, uh, banners, uh, creatives, and all kinds of stuff that is going on on websites. So when you look at one website that Nela is handling, and she's handling very big palette of websites, uh, I think you will see a, a bunch of creative. I would like to talk with you today about the creative part of bringing messages to the audience. So how are you and what are you doing? Thank you. I'm very <laughs> fine and very good. I hope you all feel good today because now today is sun. So yeah. you should feel good for today. Uh, actually, I'm working in Cast Media. Cast Media is a sales house of all the United Media. You know United Media. Do you know here yeah. what is? Yeah, it is Nova, N1. Uh, sport club, etc. And uh, we have uh, in a whole region, in all countries, we are working, and I'm working only in Serbia. So this is the new position. Uh, they, uh, we bought it uh, in like maybe eight months. We made that position, and now we are trying to make it in every country the same position because uh, we are trying not to have only uh, the old-fashioned uh, style uh, of um, ad advertising on our websites. Uh, now I'm working on eight of them, uh, of eight wow. portals. Yes, we have Zadovoljna, City Magazine, Danas RS, uh, Nova, N1, uh, Sport Club, Grand, and IDJ. So that is all now that we are working on. And, uh, you know, clients are now... Uh, trying to connect with more and more people and trying to more and more people to see what they want to sell them and where, where, where do, do they want to click. But uh, it is not like only the banner. You see, I have a nice banner and that's all. No, you will not get their attention and you will not get that good um, uh, engagement or reach. So now we are trying to make um, different uh, you know, creative projects, which I'm in charge of. And so that is the um, actual my job. I'm trying to find the projects that are good for our clients and also good for our readers because I was working in media houses for like 10 years and now I'm uh, trying to sell good content, to create good content for the pub, for the readers and also for the clients. Yeah, I would like just to continue with this uh, theme because it's very important today to to emphasize that uh, now when you want to advertise on some website, it's not like in the old days, give me, I don't know, like three millions of uh, page views or clicks and then I will, you know, put my commercial on it. Now the audience and the quality of audience is very important and we know that advertisers, clients very much are paying attention to that. And not instead of just to, to have a clickbait sites where you have yes. like... And also how long did the audience stay in your website or on your video or what is the bounce rate and everything. So the clients are now wanting all of that uh, information, it's not on, on, only how much page use was uh, on that. Uh, so so that. how are you? What is the strategy among your team? How are you committed to creating good content? Because we all know if you have a good content, people will come and stay and probably come back again. Yes, uh, so uh, actually I'm try we are trying to find uh, something that is going to be interesting. How? Uh, it's literally I go for a run and then I think, 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 think and I find three different ways. Maybe this is good, this is good and then we uh, tell each other about that and then we agree what we're going to offer to our client. Because now, nowadays clients are just like, I have 10,000 10, euros, let's say like that, and I have, uh, let's say, uh, they are not their gas station, we have uh, this budget and we have a new coffee. What we should do? That, that's mm -hmm. all. We have all, that is the brief. And yeah. you have to, you know, see something what is good for the content and we, well, we have created a um, week of the coffee and then we created seven different videos about the coffee like 
did you know that uh, when you drink coffee, it is like 10 more times that you, that you can fall in love during the drinking coffee because of the smell and of the taste? Did you know that? Do you know that you can fall in love while you drink coffee? <laughs> no, really, it is, it is really, but I didn't know that. So we were trying to find interesting informations that the information that people will stay on our site and they will uh, okay. look our video and they will like, oh, this is interesting. And then they will see that coffee. You know, that is not like, you see, this is the best bottle of water. Please buy this, buy this. No, not like that. But if I tell you, did you know if you drink like three liters of water a day, you will lost a cellulite? Uh -huh. Like, really? You will lost it? Yes. And they will, then you will see the, the bottle of water and you will maybe... You maybe bought that one. So it is more like a branded content, not like a regular one. Sometimes you are doing the regular one, but mostly it's a like branded content or creative contents or something like that, that people need to connect with the brand. People need to connect with the website. They need, uh, we need to feel engaged, that we engage them, you know, that yeah. they did something, that they feel something. Not like, okay, I got to read it and then in like five minutes, I already forgot it. No. They, we will keep them thinking about what we uh, post for them, you know, what we create. And the video is now the main, uh, main type of communicated, communication with people. Yes, because of all these platforms, TikTok, I thought. Do you have TikTok? How much of you have here? Okay, please, people. <laughs> please, believe me. In, uh, you now, if you now open TikTok in like 20 days, you will have a very good content there. But they, the TikTok needs some time to, to give you a good content. I mean, to algorithm give you what you need. So because of all these platforms and everything is fast, you need to find a way how to communicate with people, how, you, how you're going to engage with them, and uh, how they will like, be really your real users. Even if you're a website or you're a web shop or you're just selling some not maybe product, but maybe like massage or like training or something, they need to connect with you. You know, you have to now give them something more, not like, not like, a, I will give you just this. No, you need to like teach me something or I need to learn something from you or I need something to feel when I go at your website or something. So we don't want anymore to have passive readers or yeah. consumers. We want them to interact and actually they are interacting. Because in nowadays, you know, you are all, I suppose, like me, you are visiting uh, websites like tens or 20 times per day. You are uh, opening your phone in, on every two, three minutes and, and, and watching what's new. So the, consum the consumation of the content is going really fast. Yes. And that's why the whole texting and messaging process and watching video and reading news is like going in two, three seconds. So we need to be very clever how to keep our audience engaged and how to keep them loyal so that they can come back, come back. Yes. And how, how many of you here reads only the title? <laughs> come on, don't be embarrassed. It's normal. Be yes. honest, be honest. Yes. Yeah. How many of you are reading the whole text? Like from the top to the bottom, every text. <laughs> you go from the, from the bottom up. Really, why? He's going from the bottom up. Why? You're it's Arabic? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have some, some reason of that? No, it's more interesting. I'm bored with the rest yeah. of the time. Ah, so, okay. You now maybe you should try to read from the bottom to the So, you see, it was only two hands who is reading the whole uh, text. You know, so you, we don't have that much time. We don't have that much con concentration. I don't want to see something that is maybe boring or you you were just uh, giving me a lie or a clickbait or something like that. No, now you have to give them really quality uh, content that uh, because of which I will stay on your website, on your web shop, on everything you are uh, giving me on digital platforms. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, we will continue with this conversation later. Now I would like to ask Berina, first explain us really the phenomena. Why is Viber so popular here? Well, maybe you should ask you know, <laughs> the audience, but I just want to thank you uh, for the trust uh, that uh, you are using uh, over the years and uh, Serbia in general, ex-Yugoslavia or someone call it now Adriatic region or yeah. whatever. So it's very high in the Viber penetration rate from uh, you know percentage of smartphone usage. So I believe there are several, let's say, aspects uh, and reason because of it, and not just for Viber, but in general, it's the trust in the brand. 
meaning that someone is giving you the benefit, but is giving you in some secure way, I would say like this. Okay. But I would say when you started here, uh, I'm now talking only about Serbia market. When you started, it was really something new for the, for the consumers and for the market. Uh, WhatsApp wasn't that uh, highly promoted here or, or even used. So Viber really took a good chance and, and just jumped in the, in the market. And uh, now, can you tell us how much users do you have in Serbia? Can we, can we say that number or, or is that? <laughs> well, I'm not allowed to, to share the number exactly, but I can but share the penetration it, rate. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's about 90%. 90%. So from, yeah. uh, let's say, 100 smartphone users in Serbia, 90% have Viber installed on their phone and are using on daily basis. Every user in uh, uh, in Serbia, in general, let's say Serbia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Montenegro, uh, are opening, uh, let's say, 23 times per day Viber application. Meaning, for a brand that you have 23 opportunities to actually, you know, place an ad, communicate something, or just answer the questions. Yeah, that tell me more about that. I think that will be very interesting for our visitors today. For the brands, how can they use your platform and other platforms like Viber? to promote, to engage, to sell something, and how useful that tool really is today. Okay. Um, for any specific audience or in general? In general, but maybe we can then talk about e-commerce especially. Okay. So uh, uh, let's first slide like this. So how many of you knows about Viber for Business? Okay. We need to do some more marketing, yeah. obviously. <laughs> okay. So besides many, many of you know my friends when I start working in Viber, and you know, me, especially many of my relatives would say, okay, but how Viber is earning you know money? What is the commercial model behind? This is the Viber for business, meaning that besides uh, having let's say free communication and end-to-end -end free communication, there is an option for you as a brand to communicate with your end users who are using Viber. Why Viber and especially communication apps? Because it gives you an opportunity to have one-on-one -on -one personalized communication, meaning that you know uh, you don't need first to build your own app. So you don't need to invest in development. You don't need to invest in marketing. Then when you build an app, you need to you know educate people how to use it. So you already have a platform that your your target audience is comfortable with. They are able to communicate with their friends and family. And now you, there is an opportunity in that small space as a brand for you to have, you know, space of their attention using that app during the day. So there are different types of, uh, let's say, business solutions that we're offering based on, I don't want to sound as a commercial pitch, so I'm, I'm trying to give you an, a, oh, real okay. uh, examples. But for each of the stage and each KPI you as a business have to achieve, there is specifically designed product for it. For example, if you're just starting and you are maybe a small um, a startup or you just want to maybe increase brand awareness, there is advertisement solution. You have probably seen small ad space within the chat or maybe after you finish Viber call, there is a banner popping out. So there, is, there are, let's say, a few options that you can use as a brand. Later on, when, when someone, okay, spotted your brand, they're interested in your offer, but maybe they have a question. They are not maybe clear about your website. Sometimes they need additional information. There is business messaging solution. So there are two types of it, Viber business messages and Viber chatbot. The main difference is with Viber business messages, you can, if you have a mobile phone number, you can send direct message that comes to my inbox. With Viber chatbot, they need to subscribe to the chatbot in order to have this 24-7 customer support. Once, let's say, um, um, I got all my uh, answers to my questions, now I, now I want to say, let's say, I want to buy the product. Uh, in, um, unfortunately, in, in, uh, in this region, we don't have it launched yet, but in Greece and Germany, we have launched Viber Pay, which is an option that you make a payment directly from Viber to another Viber user. And after, afterwards, of course, when the, let's say, the, the purchase is finished, there, of course, you cannot stop there. Why, why stop, right? Yeah. But you need to engage again. You need to provide customer support. And for all these, let's say, stages of customer circle and full, let's say, 360 circle, there is a product that can, you know, fit your need. So depending of the company, depending of the Let's say industry, you mentioned e-commerce as an industry, for example, car abandonment is one of the use okay. cases which is very, very 
you know, let's say uh, maybe uh, most urging, uh, um, I would say, pain point for e-commerce. With Fiber Business Messages, you can make this, let's say, relatable content to actually push them to move forward in the sales cycle. Great. Uh, we'll talk about uh, later, we'll okay. talk about the uh, young generation because I'm very interested in that and actually we're trying in media to catch this new generation. Nobody uh, who is under like 23 is reading news. You know, it's a disaster for us so we have to think about the solution, how to, how to grab them and, and, and keep them as our loyal audience. So I'm very interested in, in everybody's opinion about uh, young users today. So Mirza? Uh, please tell us uh, what are the key uh, aspects of this future that you are already in, in my opinion, uh, and your company of the communication market. So actually, what do you think that will be new trends? What is going on? What will happen and what will come? Yeah, th th this is exactly like a connection of these two topics that we yeah. have, from like advertising to, to like uh, uh, engaging uh, uh, customers in, in conversation and uh, driving them through the entire customer journey. So like having the, the, the biggest communication platform uh, globally uh, in Infobip, where we like we are, we are touching in the last 12 months more than 7 billion people uh, 7 billion. With, with our services. Uh, uh, we have been analyzing like uh, 449 billion interactions in the past year, uh, from which uh, uh, we, we definitely see trend and need for conversational uh, uh, experience part in the communication with, with clients. So this means that uh, uh, like in, 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 a, in a central stage is coming uh, like hyper-personalization, automation, and 24-7 av availability from yeah. like engaging clients from advertising. Uh, uh, we heard that like expectation from brands are to engage uh, uh, audience, but also uh, uh, what we see through these interactions that expectations from, from the clients is to have like conversa uh, uh, like personal conversations with their brands, with like, you know, uh, 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 clear messaging, uh, simple uh, uh, journeys uh, to conclude the entire customer journey being like from sales, uh, advertising sales towards the, the, the customer support. Uh, uh, Therefore, like uh, uh, like today, for like all the clients, like uh, uh, they, they have like uh, um, availability of all the channels and different devices more than they have ever ever before. Yeah. So what what we see like uh, in the messaging trends, like with like timely, urgent messages, like two-factor authentication and yeah. passwords, SMS is still like predominant with trans transition to uh, digital uh, rich rich text rich messaging uh, chat-ups such as uh, Viber. Uh, uh, and also like uh, using social media like uh, such as Instagram for uh, different, uh, uh, different needs. But when it comes to like customer engagement and, uh, and support, uh, uh, we, we see a significant increase uh, uh, of, of using chat-ups. So what we saw in the, in the past year, we saw like more than 230 percent increase uh, in interactions over the like chat up with rich messaging. Uh -huh. But uh, uh, especially what, what Berina said, uh, 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 also uh, like uh, expectation of the, of the clients is like that they are, that they are interacting with the chatbots and they are being serviced by, by the chatbots because this is give, giving them flexibility to uh, uh, interact with their brands 24 seven, uh, completing their customer journey and uh, needs they have. Uh, and uh, and uh, in, in this area, uh, uh, like analyzing all, all of this data, like uh, when we are looking like industry verticals, we see skyrocketing in interactions with delivery companies, then retail e-commerce is the second one, followed by the banks, and uh, which are like shifting from traditional to conversational banking and, uh, and telco side. So, so uh, uh, like analyzing all, all of this data, we uh, uh, like, when we are looking uh, different aspects, we, would, we, we like to say that like conversational, everything is really uh, 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 like something what is like here today and what is the expectations of the clients. Uh, uh, and uh, th this is something what like uh, uh, we are all working on like to enable clients and partners with partners, uh, uh, you know, to, uh, to provide such service to them. 
So can you tell us something more about the, the workforce? Will really machines replace a lot of uh, jobs in the future in your field of, of work? Or will people be more engaged in uh, handling those systems that you are now working on and, and handling those machines and, and artificial intelligent bots? So, because I'm not so sure that you know in the future, and it's a whole debate in, on, on every conference that I'm in <clears throat> or any panel, uh, I personally think that uh, artificial intelligence will really not be so re replaceable as we think right now. So I think that people will have to maintain all their things, maybe to change their jobs, maybe to get more educated and to learn some new skills. But how is that important in your field? Because you are totally tech. Yeah, when, when we are speaking about uh, artificial intelligence, let's let's be like honest. This is this is only like uh, you know, uh, uh, algorithm uh, uh, sitting on the on the machine learning, which needs to be fitted with some data to create like predictive model uh, that yeah. is going to be used uh, interacting with the, with the clients. Uh, what we see today, like uh, uh, now, it's like buzzword about Chat GPT. In the last thirty days, there is like more than two thousand AI tools created. Lately, so this will be uh, definitely something which will grow a lot. But what we see in, in this AI world that is going to like uh, help to like optimize and utilize more what we are using today in the uh, like content creation, like with some simple use cases, like if you have agent in the contact center taking over communication from the client, AI can summarize all the all the like conversation with the chatbot. And yeah. helping agents to be more effective. So uh, it, it, uh, uh, what we see it in, in direction of like uh, 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 more optimization and, and bringing more effectiveness in, uh, okay. in, in this field, not like replacing humans uh, out of this equation because uh, uh, also when, when you want to build AI chatbot, uh, uh, you really need to understand your audience, uh, business case, uh, optimal channel, uh, or social platform through which you want to achieve the goal, uh, and then like uh, uh, implementing NLP, uh, these na natural languages and AI, helping this to optimize, to learn, and to uh, uh, be more effective to provide more like convers better conversational experience to the. To the but do you think in ten years from now that things will be dramatically different? when I'm now talking only about your uh, business and, and, and the, the work that uh, you are doing. It, will that be dramatically different or more or less this will be the system, usage of AI tech systems that are just trying to bring us good, uh, good practice in communicating via brands and via people? The yeah, most significant trend that, that we see from, from our world is, is like um, uh, with, with what you heard uh, regarding the Viber, like you, you have inside brands, uh, business messaging, you have payments, chatbots and everything yeah. serving you. Uh, we see definitely the trend that like uh, chat applications are going to, to become super applications. Okay. Because this is the place where you can like uh, 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 engage and finish everything what you need with the brand. Uh, uh, without going out, uh, installing different applications, uh, uh, brands uh, benefit for brands is, is already that you have like billions of people already on that platform, so you don't need to promote your application. So usually brands are both sides; they have their applications, but also they are uh, pretty much uh, in this. So, so we we see this trend on, of of having this of having uh, chat applications as super ap applications because this is the place where People are interacting with their friends and family uh, uh, on them, and uh, and uh, and this is their preferred channel of communication. Uh, and uh, enabling them to communicate with their brands on this platform is something what is, is really benefit, and it's really going to uh, in, in the trends to become like super application. Yeah, for, like for super application in the future yeah. is what is expecting us. So let's now move to super video content and uh, I would like Peter very much now to see the video. Can you please uh, put the video on?
Impressive, thank you. No, no, don't get up. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Peter. Yeah. Give us an overview of what are you exactly now doing and preparing and tell us something more about short videos that your company is spe specialized for. Because as we all know, short videos are now running the world on every social media platform. So, um... I'll tease a bit. I have a different perspective about the AI situation. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, an entirely different perspective, and it's it's more tectonic than than some other industries. But uh, let me digress a little bit. So um, less uh, people are consuming content in smaller doses. So there's actually a site in China that takes a movie and consolidates it or condenses it down to ten minutes. So it gets rid of all the fat, I guess. And so you could watch the movie in 10 minutes and then speak about it with your friends. So there's some social currency there. Um, it's, it's kind of a paradox or, or ironic. People say they don't have enough time for movies, but they'll watch 30 second or one minute reels for three hours. So it's not so much that they don't have the time for the movies or the length and breadth of traditional television, film, etc. It's just they want these sort of smaller tidbits or uh, shorts, as you call it, yeah. um, and lots of them. This is really interesting for us. Uh, before, I was a classical animator, so Walt Disney Animation, and then I was in advertising as an art director for a long time, and then moved back into animation. And they had this thing called the Marshmallow Spaghetti Project. Did you guys hear about this at all? Anyone? Okay, good. So what they did is they took certain groups from certain uh, industries. So they had engineers, they had marketing directors, they had uh, uh, foremen, uh, and they had children. And what they gave them was something like eight spaghetti uncooked uh, noodles and three marshmallows. And their goal was to build the biggest tower. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know who built the biggest tower? Or who was most successful? No. The engineers, <laughs> ob obviously, right? Yeah. They built buildings. but. The seconds were children. And what they did uh, differently than everybody else uh, is they built a tower, it failed, they started again. Built a tower, failed, started again, until they built the best tower. So in advertising, uh, I was in an interesting point where we're moving from what's called the old guard, which is traditional broadcast, TVC, billboards, radio, etc. cetera. And uh, it was called Interactive Digital at the time. Uh, and it was a small maverick division within the larger agencies, right? Uh, which is now the exact opposite, they're leading it. And what happened uh, at the time is, instead of putting this really big campaign, you spend, I don't know, 11 weeks, 11 months putting this campaign, all the ideas come in, you release it, and you see what the reaction was, good or bad. It was all these like little micro campaigns where you put a little bit of it, see what the response is, see what's working, tweak it, bring it back. So this iterative process. We have that luxury with animation. I mean, it's a long process, but if you do small shorts, you kind of get a feeling of which characters, which content, which storylines are best. And then we pull them back and then change sort of the, the direction. We're a bit more agile and sort of go down that avenue and make the shorts a little bit more refined, more refined, more refined. Yeah. In fact, um, we have, um, you know what a focus group is, right? Yeah. You present your information. We have a bunch of them and I work in film as well, but uh, we, we present the movie or the animation as a screener. You people watch it. They all get in the room and they say, I like this thing. I didn't like that thing, etc." And so um, with shorts, we do this with children and, and via uh, now it's via Zoom uh, because of COVID reinvented a lot of our models. And so we have uh, for our American audiences, we have about 55 viewers and there's there are 55 specific uh, focus group members that are in different states. They watch it. Uh, and then we have the focus group meeting that Meowdery says, what did you like? What didn't you like? And then because it's a short and we don't have the inertia of a long production, we take that information and then we implement it in the next short. When we consolidate these shorts, so we do three or four for traditional broadcast, uh, we already have this kind of information or this sort of insight uh, ahead of a production schedule and not deal with having to release something two years before it's, or two years after it's relevant. Does that make sense? Okay, super. But can you tell us uh, something more about the usage of art artificial intelligence within your company? And, uh, during the preparations for, for this panel, we talked about that and it was very impressive for me uh, because your uh, animation studio employees various uh, groups of people and various uh, industries. So 
are they really replaceable now? Are some of them replaceable or you're still holding on to people, not the machines? So, uh, yes. Yes, okay. Uh, okay, so we've used AI tools before quite extensively. I'm not gonna get into the particulars of Shop Talk of creating animation, especially 3D animation, because it's, it's a marriage between art and technology, right? It's really, uh, uh, military and film are the two areas that push technology the furthest, right? Yeah. So from tactical to practical for military, and for us, we do things a lot of in movies because it, we have to invent it, and then it's adopted into uh, a more commercial or, or pedestrian use. So when we're creating computer animation, uh, we use a lot of AI tools uh, in backup house, so to speak, the kitchen of it. So um, I'm not getting into the particulars, but to create animation, it's it's very, the drawing part is really early on, but afterwards it's a lot of machine and processing power to render it out to make it look really good. And so AI tools look at how to uh, exploit latency times when people are not working on their machines, they go for a smoke in Serbia, not in the States, they go, for, uh, they go for a coffee break, and the computer can look at the machine and say, how busy is this machine? Let me steal it away and do this. So it's kind of like a, a subcontractor for the work today. Yeah. And we have a lot of other tools um, that assist the artist in not looking at all the technology, so they're just interacting okay. with it. Okay, that's what we're doing now. We also have tools for analyzing how people uh, see what they're seeing. So let's say I like an animated show. I'm a kid. I'm about four years old. And we have four characters. Two of them are girls, two of them are boys. Traditional. And so uh, I may like the girl character, but I may not say it, right? Because I'm a boy and I don't want to say that. But some of the tools we use can evaluate whether or not I'm actually paying more attention to the girl than the boy character. So it removes this kind of... Um, apprehension or reservation and being completely honest in terms of the metrics. Uh, so that's where we're at now and a little bit in the future. Well, right now, the biggest debate in our industry, my industry, is we have tools like Midjourney, uh, Firefly is Adobe's release of it, that can recreate artwork. I mean, it looks like the other artists doing it. I'm not talking about Renaissance artists, I'm talking about commercial, really prolific concept artist. And it looks good. And it does it in like a fraction of the time. Impressive. And so we have tools that do it for animation. And it's an interesting balance right now because we have tools that make artwork that is phenomenal, worth seeing, and it's done completely digital. Uh, but essentially it, it doesn't sleep. It doesn't cost anything other than the license you're using it for. Uh, and it will be able to produce it. I mean, that's what it's doing now. In, it's it's a single. It's an exponential growth, right? You guys get that, right? That's how processing power works. What took three years three years ago will take 1.5 years, and then will take 90 days, and then three days until it's 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 instant, right? And so it will be able to do it instantly. What will take someone two weeks, and we can do it with the animation. And so from an artist's point of view, it's uh, it's nihilistic. It means that they're they can be replaced, absolutely they can be replaced, and arguably it would be better artwork. <laughs> uh, and from my standpoint, as a head of animation studio, I can produce, or we can produce, work faster, better, and cheaper. Same thing with agencies, right? If you don't have to deal with a fickle art director, and it's exactly the idea, and it's based on metrics, why would you use the art director? Sentimentality? Well, <laughs> I don't know, I, I come from like Robert said at the beginning, I come, I come from the ages where you had to have editors and art directors and everything, so some head, some mind that will tell you this is good, this is not good, this is allowed, this is not allowed. But okay, uh, tell us more about the future that will come so that we can be prepared. <laughs> oh, continue. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was post-apocalyptic enough. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't have the answer, I think. It's, it's uh, okay. I'll tell you my perspective. Uh, that's, a, that's a bigger debate. I don't think I have the answers, and I think it's, it could be argued for a long yeah, time. Yeah, nobody has an answer. That's, uh, that's clear. I'll make it more relevant to uh, kind of this panel, is that, uh, what was his name, the guy who spoke in public? Ah, uh, Futra. Slavimir Futra. Futra. That was amazing. I don't know if you're still here. And the part that resonated with me is that you fell on your head and forgot everything that you knew. That's storytelling. 
And that's, I think, most of what the audience connects with, right? Yeah. So you have numbers and metrics and all that kind of analytics is great and statistics, but people want to hear a story. That's, that's a rags to riches story, right? He forgot everything and then came out, he was successful, right? Yeah. Uh, the same thing applies to marketing or advertising. It's how do you tell a great story that your audience is going to connect to and they're going to resonate with, right? Yeah. Uh, my industry is about the mechanics of storytelling. There is a mechanics. There is actually a good story and a bad story. There is a definition for a story. It's not subjective. Uh, and so using these tools and, and uh, forms, not formulas, uh, you can actually uh, imbue story into what you're making. Yeah. And this is what's going to, it's going to resonate with your audiences, especially children, which is my primary audience, users, customers, whichever you want to call them. Now, AI. So we know what stories we tell each other, right? There's, I mean, the Greeks invented a large of them. They're all generally based around the art plot, right? I'm curious what kind of stories AIs wants to tell us. Because we have whatever we've been, you know, what are, we've been climatized to, et cetera, and, and it's lived on. It's, so there's only about seven major stories within it. But what's the stories AIs want to tell? And it's really curious for me from a, from a storyteller point of view. So I don't think it's completely doom and gloom, uh, but it's, it opens up, uh, I mean, we're not going to go back to horses. We have cars, yeah, right? Yeah, and in fact, sure. what most people don't understand is that if we were stuck with horses, uh, can I swear? Or is it manure, <laughs> dog, or horse shit. Uh, the mm -hmm. streets would have been covered with so much horse shit that you couldn't move. And yeah. there would have been, uh, it's true. <laughs> if we would have stuck, it, the horse shit would have been so catastrophic that it would have stopped cities from operating. Now we didn't see that problem because the car solved it before we realized it was a problem. It was a black yeah. swan, right? Yeah. So my question is, I'm sure there are problems right now that are, uh, there's an event. We, we can't prevent it from happening because it would take a, a big paradigm shift as people and we're, we're just, we're, we're either, we don't believe it or we're too lazy or too slow to change. And so the car solved a problem that we didn't even know was a problem. I don't know if AI can solve a problem that we don't even see as a problem yet. Yeah, but maybe it will. Actually, it will. Moshe. Maybe it will. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Nella, storytelling, content creation, all these uh, words uh, and expressions are now going through my head. Uh, in media business, we everything is about storytelling and everything is about content creation. And in your part of business, in, in marketing and advertising, everything is about how to uh, make a package out of that good storytelling and sell it to somebody. So what do you think, what is the best way for the young audience, I'm, not, I'm, I'm now talking just about young audience, how to create a, a good content for them on social media, not only on www something, but on social media, because uh, you are also a um, uh, very uh, respectful fitness uh, guru and <laughs> blogger and uh, you can tell us from also that perspective of your life and work how is it to create the good content that somebody will really enjoy in okay uh, I will do some tests right now uh, <laughs> okay we love I tests. will just uh, first tell you it is everything is about attention attention yes okay. you see here is not that much younger people I mean, like, no. let's say it is like 40 years, it is yeah. like 40, 40 yeah. yeah, but it yeah. is not 20, it is younger people, 20 is younger people. And most of people here were at some point of this panel watching their telephones, smartphones, computers, and they are still watching, right? And they yeah. don't have attention. Can you believe what is going inside of the head of the, somebody who is like 18 years old? who was born and living with all of that stuff that are taking our attention all the time. You have one phone, they have one tablet, they have two TVs, they have music, music. Yeah. Her, his mother is like, don't do this. You know, they are, uh, they are having a lot of stuff that they are taking their attention. So that is something that we need to know to how to ta take their, their, their attention and, uh, uh, Wait. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, uh, put them focused on our uh, thing that we want to sell them or, they, or we want them to read. So now, I will do one test. Everybody, get up. Okay. okay. I will help you with that. 
I'm committed. Like if you do this every day, ten times a day, you will lost one kilo per per, uh, per week. Per week. Let's say okay. And you will be like, wow, this girl take me. I did this. I will do it uh, every day for five, ten times, and I will lose it, and you will believe. It. And that is the attention, you know. But I, I that is the simple way how to get. Yeah, nobody's attention. watching their and phone. You, no. okay. you felt you felt something, you know. That is that is the real thing. If you feel it's also with. His video here, he also tested that. If, you, if the, your watcher or your reader or your user or anyone, anyone feels something, he will remember it. And that is the, 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 the main thing. Because you will come back on that website, you will come back to that movie, you will come back to the web shop or anything else just because it makes you to feel something. That is important. And if you just give somebody something that is beautiful and pretty, you have a lot of content which is beautiful, which is pretty, it is perfect. But if you feel, if you see somebody who is sweating, and if somebody is crying, everybody is talking that this influencer, this singer, he was crying. Yeah. You know, because you feel something. And that is now how to take the uh, old public and new public to your media, to your shops etc now uh, nowadays i'm looking all the websites all the uh, e-shops and they're all of them are putting the same posts every day they're posting it on every social media and they're just stick to it like it is a uh, uh, god you know god tell them do this yeah. this is the yeah, right. yeah, no yeah. you have to try to do different things it is digital you can never know what is going to work i mean you just need to be uh, ethical <laughs> in that, that and is very to test. important. And to test. Yes, but you have to test. And one day you will just m make something what is very good for your brand, for your uh, for your image or your website. And uh, you didn't know it's gonna work. And sometimes you will be like, "This is gonna work for sure," and it won't. Yeah. You cannot never know it because it is digital. It is very live and it is very changing, like every day. But you need to. Uh, find a way to create a content that will uh, make any feeling in your uh, your user, your reader, or somebody. And that is now with the younger generations. You know, they're having a TikTok. Believe me, everybody here open TikTok. It's very good <laughs> because uh, that is also with our with uh, older people. They don't yeah. want to try new stuff. You should try them. And now you should, if you have a brand, find a way how to communicate on TikTok. You don't have uh, analytics right now. You cannot boost your posts right now. But in, like, say, one year, two years, five years, your audience will be there. And you will have the organic reach all the time because you already got a good way to communicate with them. The communication communication is the uh, main thing on the social media, on the yeah, to the younger people, how to communicate with them and how them to feel something. Because now they are just scrolling scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and you have maybe let's say two seconds maybe or even less yeah to uh, take the, their attention so just be focused how to get that two seconds and how to be uh, and uh, what content you will give them for they to stay there so just try to give them a good content that they will feel something which means invest in in good content creators invest yes, in people creative, try to find a way how to be Try to find the people who will be creative for you and for your fans. Yeah. Thank you for this. Uh, yes, you feel better for now? this part. Yes. Or do you want five more spots? <laughs> Maybe at the end. Okay.
Melina, so can we can we also stay on this topic and talk about young generation and young audience? Uh, are, they are also texting a lot. I mean, they are the only thing that they are doing is texting. You know, they are they are visualizing the whole world through texting. I have two daughters that are students now, and they are all the time on their phones, like all their generations. So, how is Viber approaching to to younger generations? Because as we spoke, uh, you value privacy a lot. Also, our uh, your users value privacy a lot. So how to combine those two things? Indeed, uh, new generation, I would say. Uh, they are doing a business differently. They select a brand differently and they yeah. make decisions differently than, let's say, previous generation or generation before them. So before, you, you know, if you want to build a brand or do some advertisement, you will put probably a billboard on the street or you will uh, place an ad in the newspaper or you will, you know, print uh, some brochure, right? It, in other words, it's like more just one-way communication. But these days, uh, uh, the younger generation, if you allow me, they actually want to, uh, they're craving for two-way communication. They are very, uh, uh, I wouldn't say educated, uh, because that's, of course, uh, a baseline, but they are more informed because they have more and uh, you have easier access to information. As a result, they are more opinionated and they want to be heard. Yeah, for sure. On top of that, we have situation that I would say we, because I, I feel part of that generation. Yeah. So uh, we don't have a lot of patience, right? We want immediately, right now, yesterday. I don't, and I want a brand, and I will select a brand who respect my time, who respect my wishes, and who will give me the platform to actually do in the way that I'm most comfortable. Meaning, uh, if you know, in a way of fiber, uh, if if uh, uh, let's say a bank have an option for me to call a bank or to text a bank, I will probably select a bank who I just can text. text yeah. uh, if uh, let's say a brand offer me to do a refund or to do any kind of return of the goods via texting or any kind of that, I don't have any let's say interaction to wait in the call for several hours to go to the physical shop to you know. This shows that they actually respect my wishes and they respect my time. So I will probably go with that. Besides just that, you know, millennials and Gen Z generation are just, you know, concerning about themselves. They're actually selecting a brand based on how much they find that brand transparent. Mm -hmm. I heard a lot of, especially in, in, uh, in our countries, I heard a lot of uh, local brands are complaining they cannot compete with, let's say, Chinese companies or overseas companies because of cost of labors, cost of products, you know, uh, maybe unsettled the political, you know, situation, so many obstacles in the workplace and such. We heard a lot of these things nowadays in the previous panel. But uh, if you actually educate your people and be more transparent about, let's say, where do you find the goods, how many people or families you are actually hiring locally, if your brand has made in Serbia, made in Croatia, made in Bosnia, me as a consumer, especially as a let's say, uh, uh, younger generation audience, I will probably even pay a higher or premium price for that brand. Because mm -hmm. why? Because it matches my value with your value of the brand. Yeah. So uh, first it's me, of course, my needs, what I want and how I want to communicate. Then it's about values if they match with your company and what you present and how okay. transparent you are and then on top of it it's about higher let's say uh, social responsibility meaning i have seen and we have seen nowadays that a lot of companies are you know uh, uh, giving a lot of money to charity which is very honorable but a younger generation wants to be part of that process you know they want to be superheroes as well so uh, using different, let's say, strategies and different channels, we can actually include younger generation. For example, not to speak broadly, uh, let's give an exact uh, uh, example. Mm -hmm. uh, with Coca-Cola, we did uh, a, a Viper um, a social, let's say, um, media campaign that we created different kind of Viber stickers or how we call it branded Viber AI stickers, the full, the full term. 
So uh, in this campaign, they're actually promoting people to donate money to, uh, you know, during the holiday season to people in need, but they include also Coca-Cola in this product. Mm -hmm. So it was very engaging in, uh, uh, let's say, innovative way to actually include younger generation to do that. Or for example, with uh, a world organization, uh, uh, we created the branded stickers, yeah. library stickers. So people by downloading a sticker pack, which is paid sticker, and it's not for free, they're actually donating a part of that percentage to actually save uh, you know, some inherent species uh, worldwide. So uh, in, in, uh, in um, let's say, to, to summarize my answer to yeah. you, so communication platforms and especially messaging apps can actually tick all these you know, boxes from younger generation. Why? Because you can first create relatable content to them. You can create, uh, let's say, a personalized content, one-on-one -on -one communication in a fast, secure way. Now to address the second part of your question related to the, let's say, security and the yeah. data. So it's always tricky, you know, because as I mentioned, we want personalized content. You, you want, you know, if I bought an eye cream, I want, you know, uh, later in the, after two months that you sent me, dear Verena, we saw that you bought uh, eye cream. Uh, let's say we have additional uh, product for you. This is a special code. So uh, the, the company itself has to have all these data, right? So uh, on the other hand, I'm as a consumer because I'm, you know, uh, I'm very, uh, uh, I have very good access to internet. I'm always concerned about security of those data. So the fine line between, let's say, some very smart marketing and some, I would say, creepy marketing is about several things. The first one is consent, the opt-in. So me as a consumer, I'm, I'm in charge of my, my data. So I'm the one who say, okay, I want, uh, you will have access to this data. Uh, these data will be transferred in a secure way and it will not be shared with any third party provider. Using messaging apps as a Viber, uh, you will have actually this, let's say, opt in policy in place immediately by including and creating Viber business account. On top of it, um, uh, I would say that uh, these um, uh, consumers are willing to share uh, their personal data in case they have something in return meaning either a smoother customer experience or let's say a cheaper uh, sales process. For example, again, um, I will give, let's say, uh, e-commerce shop to say my data, uh, name, surname, address, payment option, everything. If it means that later on, I will not need to, you know, repeat again the process at the checkout to fill in all the data. Yeah. Or, for example, if I bought something and I'm not, let's say, um, satisfied with it and I want to uh, search for and ask uh, customer support to, to help me with, I will be okay if someone checked, you know, which product, which model I bought and immediately offered me the solution for that product. You know, so there is, let's say, um, several points uh, that, let's say, communication platforms already have as a pre-built and the brands don't need to worry about it, but just create content who will be relatable for younger audience. Great, thank you. Uh, do we have still enough time maybe for, for some questions from the audience? Yes, sure, sure. You go yeah. ahead. Yeah, okay, thank you. But do we have some questions from the audience? Yeah, okay. Hello. Hello. Good. We hear Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Alma Stange from Lubbers Consulting. I actually have two questions, one from uh, for Berina and one for Mills. I actually also took notes just to make sure I didn't forget. Uh, with the latest announcement and the latest update from Viber, we all know that uh, Viber business has now officially has been separated to a separate inbox. I wanted to understand from a business perspective what Viber is doing in order to make um, this model of selling still attractive for the businesses uh, while just keeping, uh, let's say, clients still interested enough in the brands because we know from the client's perspective it's great, no more spam emails, but let's say from the business perspective that's definitely a hassle. So I wanted to hear your perspective on that. And I have one question for Mirza. Mirza, you have mentioned some basics of AI, how it's run on algorithms, and what's the, actually the reasoning behind all of this. I wanted to understand how much of an AI is becoming too much when it comes to the not only Infobit product placements, but SaaS or any other products all around, and how much is now more preferred to have that human touch over the AI. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, I'll go first. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for your question. And I hope uh, after this session, feel free to come to me and I will be uh, here for the next two days. If you have any question related to Viber, how Viber can help you, or if you have some, uh, let's say, request to verify your community. I know a lot of uh, people are coming with this request. Back to your question, sorry. So uh, yes, for those that maybe didn't notice, we have implemented Viber Inbox. What is Viber Inbox? It's a space on top of your, uh, let's say, uh, uh, profile uh, that all your business messages or messages coming from brands are coming to that inbox. The reason why we did this, because we wanted and we, uh, we are always you know, let's say uh, putting uh, surveys in different markets and we're collecting feedback. So one of the feedback was that they're uh, not able very easily to find a message when they, their, their personal message and uh, uh, business message, you know, interfere. Meaning that uh, in case you receive, let's say, a notification from the Express in Serbia that your package will be coming in two days, after two days you have a lot of these um, um, uh, communication with your friends and family and that message goes, goes, goes below. Down, yeah. So the reason why we implemented this, we want actually to, uh, for you, for end user, as you mentioned, to be easier to find these messages and navigate your inbox, navigate your communication with the brands. Meaning that we are putting our customer first and their, their needs first. So now we'll go back what, what we do as a, to help businesses, of course. So first thing that we did, we actually removed the overlay of a uh, 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 block message, meaning that now when the business are uh, sending the message campaigns or sending one individual OTP message to specific uh, users, now they, there is no overlay message, meaning the open rate and click rate is much higher for the businesses as well. On top of that, we are doing different kinds of CRM campaigns where we educate the, the end user there is a business inbox and we are sending different kinds of reminders and nudges that actually there is some new features. Please download, update your, your um, let's say, um, update your uh, application. And on top of that, we are doing different kinds of uh, uh, Viber uh, sponsor events. Not like this, we are here as a guest and we are very grateful for it. But in each of the markets that we have very high penetration rate, and we did this for Serbia, we had uh, uh, organized, specially organized events by Viber that to, to actually educate not only end user, but also small business, medium sized business, how to navigate this, this, Great. this approach. Great. Super. Okay, okay. I will probably talk yeah, more. Yeah. We can, we we'll, can continue we'll offline. I finish. hope I answer your question. <laughs> Thank you, Mirin. Mirin, sorry. Yeah, no, no, totally. so, there are like several aspects when, uh, when it comes to like uh, using AI. Uh, you know, uh, uh, one aspect is, is always like, you know, until which point you need AI to optimize, improve, uh, and, uh, and do something with, with the content or with communication, with, which uh, you, you have like with the clients in terms of the like messaging business. Uh, uh, and uh, and th this is clearly what like each business needs to understand, you know, business case and which KPIs, what they want to achieve, and what and what and how they want to serve the clients, not to overuse the AI because the AI is not going to solve everything. Uh, from the other side, there is also a regulation part, like you know, which type of data you you, you are going to process to process through the you know models. Uh, how this data is being accessed? Is it like you you need to? Have secure environments uh, that you are not sharing this data outside of the platforms. You know, especially in the Europe, following like GDPR, Schrems two, and all of these like uh, security uh, regulations. So you know, there has to be some balance between AI and human touch always, uh, uh, like not overusing it where it's not needed, but also making sure that like data are like uh, uh, handled in secure way uh, and not being like misused in, in this direction. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. That will be all. Uh, you will also have the time later to talk to them. And uh, now I have to tell you one more information. Um, all, uh, also, even uh, you don't know about uh, dinner tonight, uh, the gala dinner, who wants to come, who is interested, there is only a few places left. And of course, uh, we do have Tesla over there and you can do a test drive. So make sure you check it out also. And now it's uh, time for our lunch. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you very much.